Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. So today we're going to do a bit of a tutorial. I've had a lot of people reach out and ask me, how do you go about changing weapons in Unity or applying different skills? A bit like Mega Man where he has the buster weapon as default and then you can activate different skills and he changes color and he kind of shoots different projectiles. So we're going to do exactly that. So I've got this um, sample scene here which you might recognize because it's part of the tutorial we did in previous videos, one for um, shooting and one for enemy um, aggro. So I'll link those tutorials down below, but um, I'll just run this to show you what we are working with. Okay, so we've got a player, you can move around, and when I click, uh -huh. a lot of fun. Uh, so we have a projectile being fired at the enemy and the enemy registering damage. So what I want to do is create a way for us to have multiple weapons which we can change between using uh, maybe the keyboard keys for the time being and then you can use it in your own games for you know You can map it to the joystick or to mobile buttons or something like that Okay, so how do we do this? Well, first of all, I'll maybe just give you a bit of a tour of this scene here and of course I can't um, Do a full in this particular video a full player control tutorial and explain how all these different um, scripts one by one work because um, that's beyond the scope of this tutorial I won't really want to focus in on the actual weapon swapping and how to implement that. This whole project is available to all uh, Patreon supporters as my way of saying thank you. All the scripts are kind of um, nicely organized and commented and things like that. All right, so what have we got here? We've got a player movement script, um, just like a animation manager that just changes the animations, an audio manager and a shoot script. So this is important here, right? This, the shoot, we see we have the uh, bullet prefab and just a kind of um, position from where to shoot from. So we'll open that up. And you can see we are simply checking for the mouse input or the left um, control on the keyboard. And then we are playing, in, playing a sound, we are playing the shoot animation. And importantly, we are shooting the bullet. So down here, you'll see we are instantiating that uh, bullet prefab, which is assigned through the inspector, and then um, telling it to shoot. And if we go into that shoot script, um, nothing too fancy going on here. It's just the velocity of the bullet being set left or right, depending on the um, facing direction. So what we want to do, we want to tap into this script and reassign this bullet prefab which sounds pretty easy and it really is. A lot of people struggle as to how exactly to go about that. So what we'll do here, we'll add a new component and it'll be a new script. We'll call this one player weapon manager. And you can call it maybe player skill manager or, or something like that, depending on the kind of game you're making and whatever naming makes more sense for your context. All right, so we'll open that script up. And the first thing we'll wanna do, we'll wanna create a bunch of references to, oh, so before we do that, I've created a bunch of prefabs here. You see, I've got fire, um, this little corona thing, <laughs> and a kind of water bullet. So these are the three weapons we're gonna be swapping between. And each of these bullets is a prefab, as you can see, and they all have this bullet script attached to it. And the bullet script you'll see has a speed value and a damage value, importantly. And each of these has a different value. So when we swap between these weapons, we're going to have a different damage output. And that script is then going to be picked up by the um, enemy on impact, which I'll show you that a bit later, and then apply the damage and kill the enemy. So if I open that bullet script, that speed and damage is being signed here and the speed is then being used to determine the, the velocity of that bullet. Easy peasy. So we'll just get rid of those bullets quickly. And we'll go back to that player a weapon script. So what we want to do here, we want to have a reference to those three prefabs. So we'll say um, bullet prefab one, just uppercase that. And bullet prefab two and bullet prefab three. 
and we'll keep those private just to be um, nice little boys and girls. And we'll serialize these fields because we'll be assigning these in the inspector. All right, so from here, we just want to assign these um, bullet prefabs into the slots here. And you can do that by either um, dragging it in or you can click here and find it. Okay, so now we have three um, different bullets. So what we'll do in the update loop, we want to check for the inputs of the keyboard in this case. If input dot get key down key code dot alpha one. So alpha one simply means um, alphanumeric one, which is the um, number one on the keyboard. And we'll just leave that blank for now. And we'll do another one. Just someone do one else if um, alpha two and an else if for alpha three. So when we click these, we want to um, change the bullet in the player shoot script, which we have up here, which is going to shoot this bullet. So what we might want to do first, we might actually need a reference to that player shoot script. So I'll say player shoot. I'll say player shoot script just to be very literal for you guys and I'll make an awake function I'm going to assign the player shoot script equals get component uh, player shoot keeping in mind that the player shoot is another component on the player object so we can do get component so for those who aren't familiar um, awake and start are the kind of um, automatic functions that fire from unity and um, awake gets fired before start. So quite often when you need to assign very critical script uh, links, um, you want to do it in the awake because sometimes if you do it in the start, they might still turn out to be null. So it's a bit safer to do it before the start. Okay, so now I have access to this shoot script. So you can see now we can do you know a um, bunch of stuff within that script. So we're just going to create a function called um, set weapon. And we're just going to give it a parameter of an uh, int and let's say weapon ID. Okay. So what we're going to do here within these um, different keyboard presses, we just want to set the weapon ID and we're going to go one, two and three. And this is going to represent the different weapon types. Um, and in here, we just want to kind of loop through those different um, weapon IDs and then assign the prefab in that player shoot script. So rather than writing an if then um, check here, I might actually do a switch statement, which is another way to, to do a condition block when you want to actually check a particular value. So we want to do a switch on the weapon ID. Then we'll write case. So um, in case the weapon ID is one, it's the best way to think about it, if the case is like a bit of an if, then player shoot script dot set bullet prefab. And here we're gonna pass in bullet one. And what we're gonna do then, we're just gonna write break. After every line of conditioning in a switch statement, you just want to write, write break, which simply means that if this is true, if the weapon ID is one, then break out of this switch statement and fire whatever code is below here. So just so it doesn't continue running through this. So I'll do quickly one for the um, case two, pass in two, case three, pass in three. Okay, so what is this set bullet prefab? Well, this is simply a function I created on that uh, player shoot script as a way to change this um, bullet prefab value because you see, I've made it private quite deliberately. This is um, a nice way to do it. Um, just as an alternative to, to changing it directly, it's good practice to use what's called a getter or setter in programming um, terminology. So this is simply a public API which lets us change a private value within a class without going straight to that value, if that makes sense. 
Okay, so we are assigning the new bullet to the current bullet. bullet. So that looks good at this point. I think we can run that and see what happens. So pressing two, pressing one, pressing three. Okay, so you can see we've got different projectiles firing with different damage outputs being registered on the enemy. So okay, let's let's now look at kind of changing the color or something just to kind of give a visual representation. So what we'll do, we'll create a new uh, function, change player color. We want to be able to see that we've assigned a new weapon type. So this will just take a value of color and I'll just call it C. And what we're going to do um, in this switch statement, we're just going to create a new line because we can do multiple things here. And we're going to say change the color to uh, color dot yellow. And as you might know, there is a, a, a class in Unity where you can kind of change a lot of um, basic colors. We'll give you, you know, cyan, magenta, black, gray, green, kind of standard stuff. So I'll do uh, magenta. And for the last one, which is like, it's like a water type, I might do cyan just to create some color consistency. So all we're going to do here, I'm just going to change the, the color of the player's sprite renderer. This may not be ideal for your own game, but um, just to show and demonstrate what we can do. Uh, sprite renderer, and I'll just call it SR. And I'll just be a cool dude and make these private here too, explicitly. So a sprite renderer, oh, I need to actually assign that. So a sprite renderer equals get component, uh, sprite uh, renderer. Okay, so now we have the sprite renderer. I did it like this here because um, every single time we change the weapon, we don't want to be constantly doing a get sprite renderer, get sprite renderer here. So we want to do it once and then we can just change the color like so. And we'll just simply assign it the value that's coming through here, which is C. Uh, okay. Okay, so pressing number two. Oh, pressing number three. Sweet. So. <laughs> That's really cool. Whee! Woohoo! Oh no, he's coming for me! Oh no! Get away, you bastard! No. <laughs> well, go back to sleep. That's it. So that's kind of cool. So what else can I show you? Okay, so there is a damage output being done on the enemy. So what I'll do, I'll go into the enemy script and we'll see how that's working. Um, so there's a bunch of like aggro related code in here, just to kind of um, some ray casting. So this is all from that previous tutorial. And once, as I mentioned that, you know, if you want to get this whole project, I've made it nice and clean for everyone with little comments everywhere. So it all makes sense. You can um, grab that if you're a Patreon supporter. And thanks to those guys who are supporting. I really appreciate that. Okay, so here we have the collision code, which checks for the bullet. So I'm using an on trigger enter 2D because my bullet has a trigger collider. It has a box collider or a circle collider, which is set as a trigger. And that bullet, all the bullets rather, all the bullet prefabs have a tag of um, bullet. Here you can see the tag is bullet. All the bullets have a tag of bullet. So we're just checking if the tag is bullet and we go, okay, yes, a bullet has hit the enemy. So we play an audio source, which is that grunt. Um, then we destroy the bullet and we show the hit label, which is simply me showing a mesh renderer, setting it to active and just kind of flipping the direction. So we're not kind of mirroring it. And okay, here is the important thing, bullet damage. So the bullet damage we're getting from the bullet script. And as I mentioned, we um, assigned the, the damage on the bullet script through the inspector panel. So you can see here five, this one's got 10, and this one's got um, three. So we are storing that damage temporarily here. We're getting it from that script directly. 
So then we are simply converting that integer to a string and displaying it on that um, hit label. And then we are kind of playing an animation on the um, enemy. We're flashing the enemy's color to red. And importantly, we are taking away, decrementing the health of the enemy based on that bullet damage. So that's pretty much it. So hopefully I've demonstrated to you how you can go about swapping a weapon prefab and kind of adding some kind of um, effect to the player. See, in your own game, you probably will want to, you know, do more than just change the color. You'll probably want to use that um, that same functionality, but swap the animation or bring in some kind of new graphic to represent a new skill or something like that. But hopefully you've enjoyed this video, guys, and you found it useful and that I've given you some insight as to how to go about managing um, weapon swapping with some degree of structure. So that's it. Give the video a thumbs up if you found it useful. And thanks to my Patreon supporters who are helping me to continue making these tutorials for the community. All the best, guys. See you all in the next video and good luck on your game dev adventures.